From the immortal pen of James Fenimore Cooper came stirring tales of the early American frontier when freedom-loving pioneers were carving a new nation out of an unknown, savage, and untamed wilderness. Stories of those exciting days and of the courage, daring, and devotion of men like Hawkeye, the first of the long rifles, and his tribal brother Chingachgook, the last of the Mohicans. here. Yeah, it's kind of surprising. We're looking for a band of lost white settlers and run into this. Maybe explain why white governor not here from settlers for six moons. Yeah, it's kind of got me worried. Those were city people fresh off the boat from England. They head for this territory and disappear. They have scout? Yeah. Well, no scout that is good leads settlers into Huron territory. No, I reckon he wouldn't. Done to your taste, Mr. Flint? That's fine eating, Ray. Better than them settlers is having. The trappers are coming. What's in them sacks for him, Rafe? Flour, half a pound of dried venison. You're a pretty smart man, Mr. Flint. Much obliged. You bring these city people out here, and when they can't take care of themselves, they got no guns, helpless, you make them trap for us and pay them with nothing. But let's not waste time. Ben Arrow, let him in. Fair catch. Take it, Rafe. I was hoping there'd be a little more provisions, Mr. Flint. It was terrible hard making out last time. You made out, didn't you? Oh, of course I did, but I was just hoping. The children get awful hungry. Next, man. That's a mighty small pack, Bass. I, I was sick. Don't make the pack any bigger. Wouldn't be surprised he was expecting to get full payment, though. You call this miserable sack full payment? You got any place else to peddle your furs? We could take it up to the capital. It ain't more than 50 miles away. 50 miles of virgin forest between here and the capital. Not one of you could find his way through a thick bush without a helping hand. And even if you could. Little Bear? Ben Arrow? What would your Huron brothers do if these people walked out on their agreement with Jake Flint? I ain't a hard man, Bass. That your boy, Sam? Sam Bass, come here. Who gave you that meat? You can't do that to my boy! Who? <laughs> That's a mistake, Winters. He 
was murdered. You better not talk like that. I intend saying whatever I please. You can't, not here. I don't intend remaining here. I'm taking Sarah and the boy back to the capital. That's 50 miles, Hiram. People like us don't know our ways around the wilderness. Besides that, what about the Hurons? Maybe there aren't any. Maybe the only two Hurons is the ones working for Flint. Besides, we've only got his word about a whole band of them. It's a mighty big chance you're taking. Well, what chance have we got staying on here? What chance has my boy got? From the looks of you, I can see we're going it alone. Come, Sarah. Sam. Peaceable enough. There is trading post here. You think maybe this settlement governor send us to find? Well, let's ask a few questions. We tell scouts what we come for? Well, we'll decide that after we talk to them. Good afternoon to you. You walk quiet as an Indian, mister. I am Indian. I see you've got a couple of Indian friends, too. Hurons. You're seeing right. Who are you? We're trappers looking for a place to set up our lines. Thought we'd set up near a trading post like here. We already got trappers. Well, there's plenty of streams, plenty of wildlife. I don't think your other trappers would mind if we set up hereabouts. I would. Well, that being the case, we'll just keep moving along. Wait a minute. We're friendly. This is Chingachgook. I'm called Hawkeye. I'm Abel Stark. You one of the English settlers that came out here to trap fur? I am. With my wife and two little ones. We'd be better off starving to death in the old country. Why is that? This is rich land. We are city folk. We don't know how to live here. You came out with scouts, didn't you? Yes. Jake Flint and his men. Well, don't they help you? They know you're talking to me. What are you asking these questions for? What are you doing out here? Came up from the capital, got a letter for one of your people. We haven't got a letter for anyone in the six months we've been out here. Who's it for? A man by the name of Hiram Bass. His brother sent it. Bass? Well, Hiram left with his family two, three hours ago. Headed for where? South, to the capital. Flint's been saying there's Hurons between us and there. Bass wouldn't believe him. Well, he should have, because there are. We'll be back.
There's no going back to the capital, not until the Hurons are cleared out, and that'd take too much time. What else can we do? Gather your furs and your gear and head north. North? But there are Indians up north, too. Well, the difference, Mr. Stark, is they're Iroquois. They're friendly. They'll let you settle amongst them. We'd never reach them. We don't know the ways of the forest. Chingachgook and I'll be glad to lead you. I'll go along with that. The rest of us will, too. What about Flint and his men? They'd never let us leave here. It's going to take you two or three days to get your furs and get ready. During that time, there's no need to inform Mr. Flint. What he doesn't know won't bother him. Them two who say they're trappers saved Sam Bass. Now they're holding a meeting in the Bass cabin. Between them two strangers and the fuss them settlers kicked up at the post, looks like it's time we taught them all a lesson. Little Bear, how long will it take you to go down river, get your tribe up here? That figure's just about right. Get going. And trappers are going to get a surprise. A real happy surprise. for now. Flint must have been sending him downstream for the other Hurons. <laughs> Flint be brave man now, with all Huron tribe behind him. What do we do now? Well, we'll go ahead with our plans. Flint doesn't know the Hurons aren't coming. That'll give us the time we need. We help settlers set trap. Yes, we can help them get started sooner that way. More than two days passed. Where are them Hurons? Maybe they kind of got held up. By what? Meanwhile, we ain't been seeing, hearing anything out of the trappers. They might be planning to move on any minute. We gotta know. Why not ask one of them? That's exactly what I got in mind. Now, you take Bend Arrow here. What do you want? Pleasure to see you, Mr. Wilshire. Last few days, me and the trappers kind of lost touch with each other. Makes me real unhappy. What are you boys up to? I ain't gonna take it kindly unless you start talking. I ain't got nothing to say. Ben Earl, give me that strip of rawhide off on the counter. What do you know about leather, Mr. Wilshire? Well, I'll tell you. When it's wet, it stretches. But when it's drying, it starts getting tighter and tighter. You understand that. Now, supposing I was to take this piece of leather here, tie it real snug around your neck when it's still wet, and then, why, we'd all sit around and wait for it to start drying. Might be very interesting. It would start strangling. <laughs> That's a real possible thing to happen, Mr. Wiltshire. But if you're so set on no! not talking... I'll tell you anything you want to know. You know, I kind of thought you would. <laughs> they all come like you say, empty-handed, with no furs. Yep. Today, they're going to take furs instead of bring them in. They're coming. Let them in. All right, Ben Arrow, open that door. Glad to see you, friends. 
But you seem to be light on furs. Ain't the little beasties been walking into the traps? We've been taking plenty of furs. <laughs> now that's interesting. Where are they? We've got them cashed. No reason to do that when I'm willing to buy them. Selling them to you is like trying to outshout a high wind, get you nothing. <laughs> Why'd you bother to come here at all? You've got furs here that belong to these trappers. We want them. I paid for them. The price wasn't right. You're getting pretty high-handed, mister. Me and my men are armed. I noticed. We still want those furs. You aim on selling them at the capital? Maybe. It's gonna be quite a job guiding all these trappers down south. Maybe we're not going south. That ain't your favorite direction. Hurons aren't my favorite people. Well, you can go wherever you like. Thanks. Only, uh, ain't you taking the Bass family with you? I don't see Hiram around. He's wounded. His wife and the boy? In the cabin. Sorry, they ain't. That's right, they're gone. Now you make sure of that, then come back. And maybe we can talk different terms, eh? in, released the Huron, they took Sarah and the boy. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? want for Mrs. Bass and the boy? All the furs the trappers got cashed away? All right, you can have them. And one thing more. You and the Indian give up your arms, become our prisoners. How do we know you'll keep your word? You don't. But you ain't got any choice either, have you? It's either you or the Bass family. I sent Little Bear here downstream to bear a message to the Hurons. You kind of intercepted him. So what I'm going to do is send you down instead. The Hurons are going to be mighty glad to meet you. Tie him to the raft. die in time, but to die by Huron is bad. I can't get these thongs loose at all. No. Leather is tight. You pull, get tighter. No way, get loose. Maybe there is, Chingachgook. Huh. No, no. You tip over the raft. No, if we can get the thongs wet, maybe we can get loose. Oh, stretch, huh? You reckon them trappers will stay in line while we sell these down to capital? No, there's nothing else they can do, now that Hawkeye and his friend are gone.
Where's the raft? They must have got loose somehow. Little bear, an arrow, go see what happened. the woods. Are they still there? Still there. I'll take you to them. Please, you ain't gonna... No, it's hanging you're due for. Well, you've got some arms and some knowledge of how to get along in the wilderness. You want to stay on by yourselves? I think we'll be yeah, just fine. I think we can manage. We'll deliver your furs and those varmints to the capital. They'll send you back more guns and provisions. I think you'll get along fine. Thanks to you and Chinguchkuk. Well, from now on, you won't have anyone to thank but yourselves. You were city people when you came out here. But now I think you're going to be real pioneers. <laughs> <laughs> 